Hello! Hi! It's a weeding vlog. Weeding? Weeding. It's a weeding vlog. Good God. Mm. It's been a long day. Hi! Hello! This is a reading vlog. This is my vlog for Voltathon! We are doing Voltathon. It's running from today, the 21st, until the 27th. We are talking about the Emperor's New Groove. Um, and so we are reading books that kind of involve things, themes, things from the Emperor's New Groove. So I am going to give you what my TBR is. Um, I like to pick out a different book for each of the prompts because I like to at least try to read a book for every prompt. You don't have to do it that way. I'm just a freaking overachieving numbskull. First book that I am going to be working on this week is Fruit of the Drunken Tree by Inger Rojas Contreras. This is the Voltathon group book. This is going to be fulfilling the prompt Emperor's New Groove and that is to read a book about two characters from completely different backgrounds. So this is going to be my main focus for this week. I'm gonna pause for the thumbnail. I have to go set up sprints so I'm not gonna talk much about what this book is about at the moment but I am going to be starting this probably during sprints tonight. The second book that I'm going to be reading is Columbia Fragmented Land Divided Society by Frank Safford and Marco Palacios. This is a non-fiction book here this year about Colombia and the different like it's it follows it I don't think it gets okay so this starts in 1946 and follows it goes up to the present day um and I wanted to have some idea of because the group book is set in Colombia and I wanted to have an, some idea of what has gone into this country gone gone into gone on in this country in the leading up to the events of the book that we have because obviously I I mean I barely know much of it what's going on in my country so I can tell you a whole lot about the tutors though I don't think I'm going to finish like this is a hundred and a hundred two hundred oh lord three hundred three hundred and seventy pages of very densely packed um stuff so I'm thinking we will not finish this this week but I'm going to try and, and make some headway in it um and kind of, I don't know, have some idea of what's going on in this country, uh, or gone on. That is to fulfill the prompt of These Hills Sing, which is to read a book by a South American author. Marco Palacios is, um, was born in Bogota, um, and he teaches there now, I believe. Next book that is on my TBR is City of Beasts by Isabel Allende. This is, um, the prompt that, uh, whatever prompt... Bring it on, bring it on. Bring it on is the prompt that it's about two characters working towards a common goal, seem to fit the bill. I wanted to read Isabel Allende, um, and so there we go. I am um, sitting down to make my recommendations list, and I realized that I, to my knowledge, do not have any, like, South American, South American, like, people who were born and raised for a significant part of their lives in South America authors. Um, I had a lot that were like diaspora authors, but I specifically wanted something that was going to be um, from someone who has lived a good deal of their life in, Col in Colombia, in South America. I wanted to kind of correct that uh, and start reading a little bit more widely than I than I do. We break that, that trend of South American authors with Nocturna by Maya Matein. Maya is Latinx, but she is not, I don't remember... Like she was, I think she was born in the United States or she grew up in the United States. I know she currently lives there and I, from what I could, I couldn't find anything confirming, but this fits Boom Baby, which is to read a book with loud colors on the cover. This is the audiobook I'm going to be starting with because I have been meaning to read it for so long that I'm just, I'm not going to put it off because it will be embarrassing if we get through this readathon and I have not picked it up and I have not finished it. Yep, that's, that's it. That's the beginning of the vlog. I'm going to go finish setting up so that we can do sprints. Hello. It is Thursday the 24th. Um, I've skipped a couple of days. Whoops, my bad. So sorry. Um, what can you do about it now? I'm here with reading updates. So far, <laughs> we are not making as much progress as I wanted, but who is surprised by that? No one, literally no one is surprised. So Monday night, I did start both Nocturna and Fruit of the Drunken Tree. I am almost done with Nocturna. I regret not picking it up sooner, obviously. That's that's just the way that these things work. This was a really good, like, I will say this about Lit Joy Crate. Their other ridiculousness aside, they did on occasion 
choose a really good book. Some of my favorites have in fact been books that I got while I was subscribed to them. It's a shame that they were foolish in other areas. But, <clears throat> so, I'm really liking this. I like the setup of like the, the prince and the thief and the things that they're trying to work together. The prince is a little bit like, really sir, you should have gone, you, you need to get some, some, some heavy hitters in here, my dude. Like, this, this is not a problem you can fix on your own, and I think he knows that, but I don't think he wants to admit that to himself because he wants to be able to fix it because he isn't able to fix the other thing that he really wants to be able to fix. And, like, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on here, and he's being really dumb. And then we just have Finn, who's doing her best to, like, not get caught by her father uh, and trying to, like, escape him and stay away from him and all of that. I like the writing. I just, yeah, it's, it's good. Um, and then... We also have Fruit of the Drunken Tree. I am less far in this. I think I'm only like 30 something pages. We've gotten to this, uh, let's see, I'm 38, I'm almost 40 pages in. This is probably what I'm going to read for part of tonight. Um, and then I'm also going to probably pick up, I don't know, because I also want to work on like my bullet journal and my reading journal, which means I would be reading this. And I do want to finish this so I can pick up City of Beasts uh, for Isabel Allende. So... Um, yeah, I guess that's, that's my update. I really like Fruit of the Drunken Tree. It, I just like her writing style. She's so good. She is so good. And I don't think, this doesn't, it's not translated. This is her. This is her writing. So, like, she just does this such a good job. And there are times that, like, she'll be talking about certain things that have happened. And she'll just throw something in there. And you go, whoa, what? So, I just... Yeah, I'm I'm excited to, to read this and finish it and discuss it. I think it will be an interesting discussion that we shall have. Can you see me? Possibly. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. It's Sunday, the 27th, <clears throat> and we have a live show <clears throat> that I uh, have not. And... Finish the group book for it. That's fine. This is this is normal. This is totally normal. Oh, you don't want to stay open like that. Okay, we can work with that. Um, fine. Oh, so I'm getting ready to film a tag for uh, VedaCon, so that I will have more books, not books, more videos ready to go when we do um, when Veda starts. Well, more videos filmed. I've got one video actually no i don't i don't have one video scheduled i've got a bunch filmed nothing scheduled that's fine i can work with that um because at least like with filming i can spend all weekend doing that or whatever long story short i am getting ready to do a new version of the well, I'm going to do an updated version of the If Books Are Superheroes tag that I came up with way, way back when. Um, like, at the very beginning of my channel. But, I'm not here to talk to you about that. I'm here to talk about Le Books. Okay, so, um, as far as Through the Drunken Tree goes, I am 169 page. I have... I have a little over a hundred pages to go to finish it, um, so we might be in trouble. We might just open the live show up with sprints at the very beginning. Um, maybe that's what we'll do. We'll just finish the finish the book. So <laughs> I am good at being a host. It's not. It's definitely like it's a good read and it's really well written. It's just not a fast read, um, but. I like, like, I like the characters, and I like what's going on in this book so far. Um, I do, it feels, like, it's another one where it feels very vignette-y, um, where we're doing a lot of just stuff. That's what I forgot at Target. Okay, it's fine. One of these days, I will remember to get a new eyebrow pencil in the shade that I need for the, the front of my brows, but oh well. We'll make do with this. I don't need it to be 
super dark anyways. I just needed to fill in the bald patch. I just have this one random spot in my eyebrow. Well, actually, no, I needed to fill in, like, the second half. Because you can't look at that. You can, can you even tell I have a full eyebrow? No, you cannot. So, anyways, um, I think it's good. I think it's interesting. Chula is a compelling character. Um, she's got a lot going on. And I'm not entirely sure I remember everything that, or understand everything that's going on with her. Uh, I'm still not sure how she poisoned the chickens. Was it the ball point pins? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I'm not sure why that scene was so big when other people were reading it. Um, but that just might be me. But... Let's see. What do I want to do today? I'm feeling this combination right here. These two. So, let's start out by laying down some matte color on the lid. Um, anyways, so... Oh, yeah, that's a really nice color. I like it so much. Um, still figuring some stuff out. And then the other book we were reading, I'm almost done, which I may listen to it as we're going back and forth here. I'm almost done. Oh my god, why can't I pick this up? With Nocturna. Can you see that? You can't see it, but that's fine. Almost done with Nocturna. You cannot escape me. Um, really liking it so far. It is, uh, it's, <laughs> I'm, well, I'm almost done. So, like, like, it's really interesting how she has worked these characters together and, like, had them connect and all of this and everything that's going on um i'm really interested to see whoa can we maybe be a little less okay i'm really interested to see where all of this is going um and how we're going because we're getting close to the end and it's part of a trilogy so i'm interested to see how we are going to be um working through that there's so much going on right now and there has been no kissing i'm okay with that it's fine she says something very much not okay with it because she's not okay there we go okay i think that's a good base for what i want to do and we'll go from there okay so where is this one okay anyways i think that's i think that's that's my updates i'm done hi hello i'm here to wrap the vlog up it's monday let's let's change this do do do, do the eight there we go it's monday the 8th 28th of march and we're we're here we're done with balsathon it's it's all right we're back battery battery died on me lovely of it to do um, so, I'm about to go downstairs and, like, prep my food for dinner so that I can put it in as soon as my mother is done making her and my father's dinner, but, uh, I have books to talk to you about. So, books I finished for vault -a -thon. We're just gonna, we're gonna count Nocturna because I have, like, five minutes left when I picked this up to finish it. So, uh, Fruit the Drunken Tree by Inga Rojas Contreras. This is a mem- it's, it's like, it's a, it's like... It's historical fiction, but it's also sort of memoir because it is based on parts of the author's life. And I think that the author was going for more of a literary fiction feel. And there are definitely places where you can tell she focused more on style and narration than she did on actually, like, grounding the reader in the time and the place and what the character is feeling and dealing with. There is a lot going on in this book, and I think that is part of what she was trying to communicate was just how much she as a seven eight nine year old was dealing with and not really understanding like you can you can really tell like as an adult reading this you can see what the child is experiencing you you can see what some of the things that she doesn't necessarily know what they mean i don't think that she needed to do less with this i think she needed to tighten up the timeline i don't think we needed like there are parts of like when she's seven that we didn't really need i think if she'd done like kind of fictionalized the timeline a little bit more 
and given the reader more to ground them in like the passage of time because a lot of this just felt like one long day continuing on itself. Um, and then I also wish we had gotten a little bit more of Petrona's um, point of view just so that we kind of got an idea of what her, like I think we got an idea in some places of what her motivations and feelings were in regards to her family. But I wish we'd gotten to see a little bit more about her feelings for the girls and Senora Alma from her point of view while she was in the house. Like there's a whole bunch of stuff that's revealed at the end about Petrona and I was like, they found a what in her bed? What's going on here? Like they just, there was a lot that I feel like I understand what the author was trying to do and I think that she did it pretty well but there are a few places where I would have polished it up a little bit and I think the narrative itself could have would have been stronger and more um, digest not digestible but like easier for the reader to follow because it was very hard to follow in places and I know part of that is because she was going in and out of being her seven-year-old self um, I think we really needed like a very distinct like I am an adult looking back at this kind of thing I ended up giving it I ended up giving it three stars. I thought it was good. I think it's worth reading. There are major, major tr trigger warnings for just violence against women and children. Uh, and, and children, yeah, violence against women and children, in violence against women in general, uh, kidnapping. Because th at this point in Colombian history, like m multiple people are getting kidnapped. So like th it's it's one of those things like uh, the author says if you didn't know someone who or if you didn't have a family member who had been kidnapped you knew someone who had a family member who had been kidnapped so just um, know that that's in there and also sexual assault and rape there are it, uh, there are mentions of those in here as well the other book that I finished for Voltathon was Nocturna by Maya Matane this has been on how many TBRs at this point this was so good I enjoyed it so much like. The relationship that comes up between Alfie and Finn is just like so much fun. Like they're continually calling each other not by their names, but like she calls him Prince and he calls her Thief. And that's just my jam. Like, hmm. I don't know what it is about occupational or title nicknames that gets me, but they get me. I just, like it's like, I love it so much. Um, this was really good. I thought that it was a really interesting magic system that Motain had come up with. And I really liked the, like, what was, go like, like the main conflict. I thought that that was a really interesting way to do it. And I think she did a really good job of wrapping things up in a way that left it open for the sequels. Because, like, it's one of those things that, like, the reader is going to be satisfied, but also there are several things that, uh, while they seem to be dealt with, are not dealt with as permanently as they could have been dealt with. And so I am excited to see where the next book goes. I'm so glad that I finally read this. It makes me so happy. Um, I, like, I was kicking myself for having put this on as off as long as I had. I don't know, 70 pages in before I was like, I made a grievous mistake putting this off. Um, I will say that if there, if abusive, like there's trigger warnings for abusive parents in this, um, and also just, there, there is a little bit of uh, blood and gore that gets descriptive. So keep that in mind. This reminds me a little bit of um, certain aspects of A Darker Shade of Magic and the conflict itself and what they're kind of going up against um like very different characters very different well actually no 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 kind of kind of the same dynamic so no wonder i like it so much if kel and reese had a a clone of themselves in one person that is who alfie would be and then finn is you, your typical stabby girl. So anyways, I gave that four stars. I really enjoyed it. I'm really glad that I finally read it. So anyways, um, that wraps up my Vault-a-thon. Did I do any of the not book-related prompts this time around? No, I did not. Do I ever do any of the not book-related prompts? I would very much like to know what book you have been putting off that you ended up kicking yourself over. Like the most, the most recent book that you, you were like, I regret putting this off as long as I put it off. 
Let me know that in the comments if you're feeling chatty. If you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a fox. No, it's Emperor's New Groove. Leave me an, a llama emoji because we did Emperor's New Groove for the movie that we watched. So leave me a llama emoji. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy some of the videos that I will have over here. I'll have another recent vlog up here and then whatever is most recent on my channel down here. That is it for now, my friends. Happy reading and I will see you later when we will talk about more wordy, nerdy things. Bye!